Reading from Proverbs, chapter 26, from the Authorized Version of the Scriptures, verse 12. Seest thou a man wise in his own conceit? There is more hope of a fool than of him. A man who is wise in his own conceit. Well, what does it mean to be wise? To have wisdom. What is true wisdom? True wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Now, in Scripture, every appearance of the word wisdom is not always in reference onto the fear of the Lord. It's the context which defines it. But in a general sense and purpose, true wisdom is that exactly the fear of the Lord. So if someone is wise in their own conceit, hmm, what are they, what are they wise in? Hmm? What are they wise in? Worldly things. See, someone who is wise in their own conceits usually have something, an idol, that is in the way. And remember, an idol is always a little statue. No. An idol can be a doctrine, an ideology, a principle, as well as a little marionette statue or a satanic little Christmas tree, whatever you want to call it, okay? <laughs> yes. Yes. And there is more hope of a fool. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. I, I'm going to tell you, I would much rather have dealings with and witnessing and, you know, just dealing with a open atheist than some of these Christians. Because some of these Christians, for example, Christians, Christians, yeah. Some of these Christians who think they have seen God and you try to lovingly, it's like, hey man, you haven't seen God and you give them scriptures to support it, that no, you haven't. They will do scriptural gymnastics and when the Lord debunks one thing they're going to try to find for another. And it usually involves crossing dispensational lines and taking something out of this dispensation and trying to make it relative. It's, it's nonsense. It's nonsensical. It's nonsensical. Or uh, you try to uh, rationally, scripturally reason with someone who is an easy believism heretic. Well, I'm saved just because I believe. So then you saved yourself. Oh, it's faith alone. And... No. It's easier dealing with someone. I don't, there's no God. What are you talking? It's easier to deal with someone like that than with a Christian who is wise in his own conceits. The scriptures say right here, there is more hope of a fool who said in his heart, who says in his heart, there is no God. There's more hope of a fool than someone who is wise in their own conceits. That's scary. That's really scary. Hmm. Today we are going to be continuing this refutation of some of this charismatic nonsense today. Um, as I said in the previous video, this is something that, this is a direction, this is something that the Lord wants me to address because I used to be a charismatic. I used to be a charismatic Pentecostal. I've seen with my own two eyes, these are reading glasses, I've seen with my own two eyes the freak show that is uh, Pentecostal charismatics. Okay, I've seen it. <laughs> yeah, I've seen it. Okay, I've seen the work of the devil. The uh, blah, 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 tongue talking, the slain in the spirit. The jerks or the quaking, okay? I've seen that stuff. I've seen grown men crawling around on the ground like a dog. I've seen that laughter. <laughs> that, you know, I mean, you can see that stuff online, but when you see that in person, oh boy. I've seen people doing this, it's a crouching and being, it's, I, I've seen it all. I've seen that. I've seen that. It's terrifying. 
Yeah, I've seen it. And that's the work of Satan. And see, there are some charismatics out there who'll be like, yeah, 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 tongue talking, that's nonsense. But direct divine revelation. Hmm. As if they were a apostle, an apostle or an Old Testament prophet. See, when I say to you charismatic, what do you what do you think of? What do you think of, beg your pardon? What do you think of? Probably a majority of you think right away of the Kenneth Doplins, okay? The uh, Joyce Meyer people, okay? Stuff like that, the Pentecostals. But you got to remember that what is charismatic is not just relegated to the Pentecostals. There are charismatic Catholics that do the blah, 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 tongue talking and stuff like that and believe and see. And this is what signifies a charismatic sign gifts, signs. See, a charismatic, even though they may claim they walk by faith, no, they're motivated by visual stimuli, signs. That's what makes a charismatic a charismatic. Truly, okay? Uh, in the playlist, uh, Refuting Charismatic Heresy, um, we I put the definition for charismatic out of Oxford, I believe it was, because in Webster's 1828 Dictionary, um, charismatic is not in Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Charism is, and charism is all talked about in uh, the uh, um, Catechism of the Catholic Church. <laughs> Warning, okay? Absolutely. But yes, there are charismatic Catholics. There are charismatic Baptists. There are charismatic Methodists. There are char charismatic Lutherans. Okay? There are even charismatic Calvinists. And see, it's a sensationalism, which is the charismatic thing. And... It is, while it is prevalent in the Pentecostal thing, yes it is, it is not just relegated to it. It's a form of sensationalism, a visual stimuli. It's like, well, Brad, you, you claim to hear from the Lord. Yeah, yeah. But you don't hear from him audibly? No. Well, then you must not be saved because you're not hearing the Lord audibly. I walk by faith, not by sight. That's not sight. Shut up. Shut up. That's a sensationalism. That's sensationalism. Sensual. And this wisdom cometh not from above, but is what? Earthly, sensual, devilish. And, and trying to rationally, lovingly, while being aggressive, uh, trying to plead with people, look, look, dude, you have not seen God. Okay? And see... When you go through the scriptures with some of these people, it's like, dude, you haven't seen the Lord. Okay, you're deceived. Okay, please wake up. Uh, they will do scriptural gymnastics, and it always includes taking things from other dispensations to try to make them relative today and take them out of con context while doing so. And some of these people have the correct doctrine, even the correct salvation. But who they supposedly are in Christ are based upon visual stimuli or sensationalism. That's a warning. You need to reflect whether or not you truly are saved. Just like Proverbs 26 verse 12 is also a very good verse for self-reflection. Am I wise in my own conceits? I don't want to be wise in my own conceits. Hey, if I'm wrong in something, number one, Lord, please show me. Number two, he's going to show me through the scriptures, not through your opinions, not through whatever your emotionalisms. No, you, you show me through scripture. Refute me and rebuke me with scripture. And you know if you do, I'm going to check it out. And if it lines up, I, I personally, I've got no problem with publicly repenting and admitting my error, unlike some people who never make mistakes. <laughs> Warning! Okay? <laughs> Warning! Okay? 
Um, I, I'm not afraid of that at all. And it's good and needful for you to see that people who you are listening to, yeah, because we're fallible. God is infallible. But today, we're going to be continuing and refuting some of these arguments. And with these charismatics, it really doesn't matter how much of their nonsense to scripture gets refuted. They're just going to go try to find something else. I pray for you, you charismatics. I was once one of you. But you erroneously, horrifically think that God appeared to you today. He did not. Okay? Like was stated in the previous video, there were specific, specific purposes and reasons why God appeared onto people within this very dispensation. Jews were involved every single time in one way or another. Okay? And why isn't he doing that today? Number one, the Lord, who is the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that spirit, when someone is saved of our Lord, the Holy Ghost is a permanent resident within that individual and will guide them into all truth. And number two, the completed canon of Scripture is given to us. Okay? So, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Yes, it does. And you are to search the Scriptures daily, whether these things be so. That means not just listening to it all the time. Now, granted, I know there are some people out there who have medical problems which prevent them from reading the scriptures. We've talked about this before. I know of a brother uh, out in Jersey who um, has difficulty uh, actually going through the scriptures because he's in a hospital bed. I know of another brother who can barely move his arms. Okay? Okay? I mean, granted, that's... Eh. But still, yes, I understand that, okay? Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. But we are to search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't get an actual physical copy of the scriptures and search them, okay? See, depending on direct revelation, God speaks to me. God will speak to you through scripture. If you want to hear God speak to you audibly, read scripture out loud, okay? That, that is, that is, I mean, I personally, I read the scriptures out loud myself and the Lord will say, you know, I'll read something out loud and then I'll, it's like, whoa, because I hear it, you know, me reading God's word and he gets my attention through me reading his word. Okay. That's how it works. Okay. Like uh, it says in the book of Luke, they have Mo, I, I believe that's in uh, Luke 14 or 16, something like that. They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them, meaning they have the scriptures. So if you're hearing a voice and what that voice is giving you is contrary to what is scriptural, you're not hearing God. You have not seen God. You are not hearing God. Please repent. Please Take a little inventory and consider. Because, you know, like for on some of these social uh, uh, network things here, unless you know or have an, a specific thing that you are looking for, uh, for example, if you were specifically looking for chick tracks, you know what to look for. If you were looking for, uh, his, you know, His Holiness, Mr. Den Denlinger, you know, you put in his stuff. You know, if you were looking for uh, Philip Newton or, or myself or James Knox or Mr. Nesbitt, okay? Unless you know what you are specifically looking for, if you look on one of these social media thingies, when it comes to what is Christian, you're going to run into pretty much three types. Catholic, Calvinist, or Charismatic. The three C's. The three C's. Hence, you need to be aware of that. And because unless you specifically know what you are looking for or have a specific thing that you are looking for, you're going to run into one of the three C's. Catholic, Calvinist, or Charismatic. And all three are heretical. All three. But enough of that. That's pretty much a good introduction, I will say. 
Like I said, Proverbs 26, verse 12, and thank you, dear brother, for this. Seest thou a man wise in his own conceit? There is more hope of a fool than of him. There is more hope of someone who says in, the, in his heart there is no God than you who are twisting the scripture to defend that you've seen something that you have not really seen. Oh, you have seen something, but you haven't seen the Lord. For you to defend something that you've heard, but you're not hearing from God. There's more hope of a fool who says in his heart there is no God than of you. I understand that. But, with the, but the impossible is possible with God. So, today, um, please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And I'm using the 1611. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And follow me along. <laughs> follow me along. Word for word, verse by verse in the scriptures. Check me out. Make sure I, I ain't making an error. Misspeaking? Make sure I ain't lying to you. Check me out, please. Come on. Come on. Check me out. If I make mistakes, hey, email me. Go ahead. Keep it clean or not, I'm going to expose you. Okay? But go ahead. Go ahead. Okay? We are going to be doing a light expository video. Light. Because we're, we're not going to be expositor, expositing on every verse. But we are going to dismantle one of the arguments of a charismatic to defend that God appears to people today or that appear to you personally, which is, this is nonsense. And this, this is something that if you would rightly divide the word of truth appropriately, okay? And those of you who are of the Church of the Living God, you're going to see this and it's be like, Whoa, dude, that's pretty obvious. And it is. We're going to be doing a light expository of John chapter 14, verses 15 on to verse 26. We're not going to be expositor, uh, expositing every verse because we, we really don't need to, okay? We really don't need to, okay? Because what it, it explains itself. Only someone who is deceived, who is wants to be part of that esoteric, you know, the in crowd, the elite, which sad to say is very similar to Calvinism. Calvinism, elect and non-elect. Well, I, I'm elect and you're not. And the common salvation, which was once delivered onto the saints. Thank you for that rebuke. In the previous video, I said one, uh, once handed down. Forgive me that error. Forgive me. See? Okay. It was once delivered onto the saints. Common salvation. There's one method and mode of salvation today. The cross. Okay. Going to the Lord broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord calling upon his name. Well, I've done that. After the Lord appeared to you. Uh, 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 and then they come up with this kind of nonsense and tomfoolery. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, okay. John chapter 14. Follow me along. Verses 15 on to verse 26. Let us begin. Verse 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Now, right away, this is John chapter, 15, uh, John chapter 14. Okay? The Last Supper. He had just washed the disciples' feet. And he's explaining things that are coming, okay? This is key to remember. He was about to go to the cross. The dispensation of the law was about to come to, the, to an end when Christ was crucified, died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures, you know, shed his blood on the cross. The dispensation of the law was coming to an end. So he was giving on to his disciples, the apostles that were with him right there, um, what was happening and what was going to happen, okay? You have to remember that, okay? Because there are many who are of the church of the living God 
and don't do anything God says, yet they're going to go to heaven, but yet their testimony is shot, and when they get up to heaven, the Lord's going to be ashamed of them for eternity, yet they're going to get in. Yes, they are. But the Lord's honor means nothing to these people. Because whether or not you keep the commandments today are not pertinent to your salvation, because why? It's not your salvation, it's His. Once he saves you, you're once saved, always saved, okay? You are, okay? Y yes, you can be saved and disregard everything of the scripture and live just like a lost devil a part of the world. You'll go nowhere. You will make the Lord ashamed of you for eternity. And uh, you keep it up, he will probably kill you, <laughs> okay? But if ye love me, keep my commandments. It's not at gunpoint necessity doing what he says. We do it out of love because he first loved us. 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Okay? Yeah, you don't have to keep anything to be saved because it's not your salvation. It's the Lord's salvation. Okay? But there are dramatic consequences to you. For not doing what the Lord says. And it ain't worth it. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verses 14 on to verse 21. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verses 14 on to verse 21. For the love of Christ constraineth us. Because we thus judge. That if one died for all. Then we're all dead. Dead in trespasses and sins. Amen. And that he died for all, that they which live, who are saved, should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Hence, the reason why we do what the Lord says in the scriptures, out of love, fear, okay? He saved us. He first loved, past tense, us. Hence, the, okay, and we're, we're going to look at this too, okay? Okay. Uh, it's our reasonable service, okay? If we love him, let's show it by doing what he says, okay? Let's continue. Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. What does that mean? We've known him after the flesh. Uh, you got the scriptures right before you. You have the testimony of how our Lord Jesus Christ, who Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. You learn how he lived his life while in the flesh. Okay? Let's continue. Therefore, if... Oh, that's a big if. Therefore, if any man be in Christ. He is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Every single one of us who are saved, born again, converted of the church of God, which is the church of the living God, uh, we are ministers of reconciliation. That doesn't mean as a woman that you have authority to teach men. But you are in the, uh, you are in the ministry of reconciliation. Absolutely, we all are. Okay? To wit, God was in Christ. Reconciling the world unto himself. Remember, Christ means anointed one. Okay? The Lord's Christ. The one who is anointed. The one chosen. Okay? Okay? Jehovah saves Jesus Christ, the anointed one. Okay? So, to wit, God was in Christ. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. These three are one. These three are one. Reconciling the world unto himself not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. The way you serve Christ reflects Christ. Hence, 
of if you're truly saved and of the church of the living God and there's no difference between you and a pagan heathen you're, you're yeah 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 you're quite an ambassador for Christ yeah yeah giving no encouragement no sound doctrine no teaching but just finger pointing and this 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 is yeah quite a yeah you're an ambassador for that spirit of antichrist but not the christ of the scriptures absolutely yeah yeah quite an ambassador you are there man yeah now then we are ambassadors for christ as though god did beseech you by us we pray you in christ's stead that ye be reconciled to god for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. Christ never sinned. God never sinned. It was impossible for God to sin. See, but Jesus Christ, who, you know, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, sinful flesh, okay? God within that flesh could not sin, but that flesh was sinful. I know that's so hard for a lot of you devils out there to get that. I, I understand. If you have legitimate questions, hey, fine, bring them on. That's fine. But you're Catholics. You're Catholics. Gnostic Catholics at that. Yeah. Flesh became God. No, God became flesh. <laughs> God was manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. I know that's so hard for you to understand. I know. But never mind. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. It's his righteousness, his imputed righteousness. Okay? If we love him, we will keep his commandments. Why? Because he first loved us. Okay? And go, now go to Romans chapter 13. Okay? Well, you're supposed to just live by the Spirit. God is Spirit. No, God is a Spirit. How are you discerning which one is which if all you're doing is listening and not looking? Okay? Give me a break. Romans chapter 13, verses 8 on to verse 14. Well, God saved me, and I just gotta, I just gotta go by my heart and live by my feelings and go where the Spirit leads me. And there are no laws or rules for us to follow. That's the Old Testament. Romans chapter 13, verses 8 on to verse 14. Owe no man anything but to love one another. Don't go into, don't go into that. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. There's no commandments for us today. Really? Okay. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. And if you don't have the authorized version of the scriptures, this isn't in there. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not co covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. <laughs> a friend of ours, a dear friend, a brother, it's like, do you really want me to love you as I love myself? I'm really hard on myself. What this means is, you know, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. That's the true golden rule. Not he who has the gold makes the rules, okay? No. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. You know, be respectful of your neighbors. Because when you get right down to it, <laughs> if I love some of you how I love myself, oh, wow. I, through the scriptures, am my greatest critic. Okay? Love worketh no, no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law because he first loved us. See, you do what we do what we do for Christ out of love. Okay? There is no fear in love. Yes, we fear the Lord, absolutely. But we we do what we do for our Lord because we want to. Not because, oh fine, I guess I have to. No, you're missing it. God's not forcing you to do anything at gunpoint. Okay? 
And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. <laughs> yeah, especially if you think you've seen God or are hearing from him. Yeah. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Nearer. We're one cl step closer to being redeemed today than we were yesterday. Okay? The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. And we're going to be getting to this armor of light thing. You'll see the thumbnail. Um, and that, I, I apologize, but you'll see. It's, woohoo! <laughs> so, the armor of light. We're a little light bulb that actually emanates light that only lost people can see. That, And let us put on the armor of light. Verse 18, uh, verse 13. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy, envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. To fulfill the lusts thereof. Hmm. It, it's quite fleshfully satisfying, isn't it? To tell people that, oh, well, you know, I, I, I've seen it. I've seen the Lord. I, I've seen the Lord. How come I haven't? Well, he, he only does it for certain people. But not me. I'm sorry, what can I say? I'm not like you. Yes, you are. Deep down in your gut, even deep down to your stones, that's what you're about. All of you, you, you know, these guys who go to heaven and go to hell. Well, I'm, I'm special. I'm esoteric. Not exoteric. Esoteric. Okay? Yeah. You're elect. If ye love me, if ye love me, keep my commandments. You don't have to. No, you don't. God's not forcing him, forcing you to do so. No, he's not. But our Lord's honor means nothing to you. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Not Thessalonians. Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 on to verse 16. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Now that does not mean that you're working to save yourself, okay? The Lord Jesus Christ, who is God our Father, dwells within you. The Lord is that spirit, okay? He lives within you. You are to work out, out what he has put in, okay? Himself. You are to live your life according to the scriptures. He ain't going to force you to do so. He wants you to make the right choices. We, we've talked about this countless times, okay? But we are to work out what God has put in himself. So work out our own salvation with fear and trembling doesn't mean that we're working to save ourselves. No. Or working to say, stay saved. No. No. No, 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 no. 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 We are to walk in accordance with the gospel, with in accordance with the doctrines that are for us today, with the examples that we have for instruction and righteousness in the Old Testament. Okay? That's what that means. All right? All right? Why? Out of love for him who died for us. And, yeah, fear is a great part of that. Because if you ain't walking right, and he decides to take away from you a blessing or a mercy or a grace, you have everything to fear. Amen? Let's continue. <clears throat> For it is God which worketh in you, that describes verse 13, describes verse 12, okay? Both to will 
and to do of his good pleasure. Scripture explains itself right there, okay? Verse 14. Do all things without murmurings and disputings. Oh, I guess I got to do this. Oh, I got no. Okay, hey, Lord, that, that, that's what you want me to do? I'm going to do it. You died for me. It's the least I could do, okay? That ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. That's God within you by the way you live. Not that you are actually, literally, physically emanating light as with Moses, and we're going to look at that. That is God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. God did not give you that. God did not give you that. The God of this world gave you that. Not the God of the Scriptures. Uh, let's continue. Verse 16. Holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. See, it's what it's talking about is living according to a standard that is given in Scripture, holding fast the word of life. That is not a capital W, even in the 1611, okay? We are to walk in accordance with Scripture, okay? And that is what shines, not that our bodies are actually emanating a light that only lost people can see. Lost people, you, you've been around them. When the, the Lord in you, they're getting, it's like, Ugh, you know, it's happened to me a lot. It's happened to you. It's not because you're walking around as a light bulb and only they can, th that's insane. Beloved, that's insane. That, that, that God did not give you that. Oh, 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 and, and, and 1 John chapter 4, 1 John chapter 4, okay, let's, let's really get to the meat of this, uh, 1 John chapter 4, okay, come on, fingers work with me, 1 John chapter 4, verses 9 on to verse 14, in this was manifested the love of God toward us. Because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Because he lives in us. See, what verse 9 is talking about is the love of God is Jesus Christ and him crucified. That is God's love manifested towards us. Towards you. You got to go to him on his terms. Broken, contrite, and in fear of him call upon his name. Yes, but if you're coming there because you saw him. Huh. So the basis of your salvation is based upon sight. No. Let's continue. Herein is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved, past tense, us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. The, the one who paid it, okay? Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man, ha and we've talked about this in the previous video, no man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us and his love is perfected in us. People will be able to see the love of God in the way you behave. Not that they see a love. You got the glow. That's nonsense. That's nonsense. Okay? People will be able to see God in you by the way you behave and live your life. Okay? As a testimony unto the lost. We are ambassadors for Christ. We have the word of reconciliation and the ministry of reconciliation. Okay? 
It's about how we live, not that a visual, uh, uh, sensual sign is going on. The sign gifts are gone, friend. They died with the last of the apostles. Okay? The sign gifts were going away after Acts chapter 7 when the Jews officially as a nation rejected the gospel. Okay? The sign gifts started to go away. Okay? The sign gifts are not in operation today. Why? Because the Lord dwells within the believer, sealed until the day of redemption, and we have the canon of Scripture completed before us. Okay? Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us, because he hath given of us, because he hath given us of his spirit, sealed unto the day of redemption. Okay? And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. See, we thought, no, who wrote this? This is John the Apostle. He saw the Lord crucified. So when he says, and we have seen, it does not mean that today that the Lord is going to personally appear to you. Okay? John wrote this book through the Holy Ghost. Okay? John was a witness to the sufferings of Christ on the cross. So when he says, and we have seen, that doesn't mean that today that God is appearing to you. No, no, it, it, you're, you're, you're deceived and deluded by that, my friends. Oh, let's continue, okay? Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. Okay, and what are we reading to? Verse 14. Uh, what, the, and we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Okay? I know we said on to verse 14, but we read a little farther. Okay? See, we do what God says out of love. Yes, fear is, is involved because if you mess around with God, he can mess with you ten times harder. Yes, you're truly saved and you mess up, you're going to go to heaven, but he's going to be ashamed of you forever. I don't want to bear that. How about you? But you just want to vent your spleen, huh? huh? Now, 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 4. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. Okay? Not at force. Like I said, there are those of the church of the living God who are totally messed up and not keep not doing anything. They're going to go to heaven. Yes, you are. But God's going to be ashamed of you for eternity. Oh, it's you. I dwelled within you. I saved you. And you lived your life like that. You embarrassed me in front of uh, in front of others. Just, I don't just get in there and go away from me. Get before I change. <laughs> That's not going to happen. But before go go just go. For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not grievous. For whosoever is born of God, having God within them. Okay, overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Okay? So, the love of God, we love God, hence we keep his commandments. If you claim to be of the church of the living God and are willfully, every day living as a devil, you don't love God. And I doubt whether or not you're saved. We all make mistakes. We sin daily, yes. But if you are actively living as the world and you claim to be a Christian for over 25 years, give me a break. Give me a break. Smell skunk from overseas. Okay? Now, back to John chapter 14, verse 16. Let's read verse 15 and 16. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Verse 16. And I will pray the Father. 
And he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Another comforter. I will pray the Father. John chapter 17. John chapter 17. The true Lord's Prayer. Verses 17 on to verse 23 in John chapter 17. This is the Lord's Prayer. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me on into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for this sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. See? intrinsically linked. God is not going to save you to live a life apart from the scriptures. Okay? To actually physically being within them. Yeah, it, it's now let me let me make this clear. Yes, it's okay to hear the scriptures. Yes. But if that is your only means of being fed, no. No. Because Man's attention span, even in the best of you, your attention span is that of a gnat. And how quickly and easily can you get distracted by visual stimuli unless, okay, you're listening to Scorby? Do, at least get the scriptures and follow along. Okay? Please. 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 Okay? Come on now. For their sakes, and for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all might be one, as thou, Father, art in me, the soul of the Godhead, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. And that glory, meaning the Holy Ghost, okay? Not a visual, physical glow. That's crazy. That's crazy. God didn't give you that, man. Okay? I, don't look at me, look at verse 23. I in them. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And the Lord is that Spirit, the Holy Ghost. I in them, the Lord lives in you, and thou in me, okay, the soul of the Godhead, that they may be made perfect in one. And that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Okay? The Lord in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Okay? That's what he's talking about. The coming Holy Ghost. See, this is the Last Supper. Okay? When our Lord, the dispensation of the law was coming to an end. And he was explaining things that were coming. He was talking about the coming of the Holy Ghost. Not that he is going to physically manifest himself to someone today. He did it. We watched the previous video. There were reasons why in this dispensation he physically appeared unto people. Which are not being done today after that one time event that they happened in the book of Acts. Okay? Well, what about John? You're, 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 you're off the rails there with that one. Crazy. Okay? Now go to Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. Verses 1 on to verse 8. Acts chapter 1, verses 1 on to verse 8. The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. A scriptural apostle saw the Lord and personally chosen. Not the apostles of men that, that are rife today. God didn't choose any of them. 
There were only 12, okay? We covered that in the previous video. To whom also he shewed himself alive after his passion, by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, kingdom of God being spiritual, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, spelled with an H here in the 1611, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. And that promise of the Father is the Holy Ghost, which is the Lord himself, okay? For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked him, asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons, which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, to the Jew first, and in all Judea, Jew, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. It was to the Jew first. Okay? Okay? Talking about the coming seal, the Holy Ghost, God within you, of glory. Okay? This is what this is talking about. Okay? Now go back to John 14, verse 17. Okay? So, Verse 15, he's like, if you love if you love me, keep my commandments. Verse 16, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Verse 17, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not. So see, the Holy Ghost in you is going to be evident by that fire, right, that makes you glow, you're crazy. God did not give that to you. You're nuts. No, okay. How do they How do they see the Lord in you today? By a physical visual glow? No. By how you live your life, walk your talk as an ambassador of Christ who has the word of reconciliation and the ministry of reconciliation. Okay? The sign gifts are gone. We walk by faith, not by sight. You're believing and preaching visual signs. Heresy. Heresy. That's what these charismatics are doing. Old Testament's lying signs and wonders. It's not like that today. God, they, Jesus said... They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. If they won't hear the scriptures, neither will they be persuaded though one rose from the dead. And how many of these people are rising from the dead? Quite a few, actually. And they're so sincere. Okay? <laughs> Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not. Neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. See, that, 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 that verse explains itself. It explains itself. The world cannot see the Holy Ghost. How is the, they can't see him visit, you know, but how can they see him? How, Okay. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. The world because it doesn't come to the, to the Lord. Because it seeth him not. How are they to see him? If they don't see him visibly. They are to see him in us. Who have the ministry of reconciliation. The word of reconciliation. Okay. And we are ambassadors for Christ. They are to see Christ in us. Working out. What he has put in. Not some charismatic. Glowing. No. No, 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 no. Okay, uh, Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Okay? Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. 
verses 13 on to verse 14. Okay? In whom, the, and this is what our Lord is talking about. This is what he's describing. The coming of the Holy Ghost, which is the Lord, the Lord himself, that seal until the day of redemption. That is what he is talking about. And when the Lord seals you, and you are doing what the Lord says out of love, um, yes, you shine as a light, not physically, actually, literally, like, like a light bulb here. Okay? Christ is shining through you in the way you live in accordance with the scriptures. Not that you're walking around like an energizer bunny with a... <laughs> in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession, the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble, unto the praise of his glory. Okay? Second Corinthians chapter 1. Second Corinthians chapter 1. Okay? Verses, what was it? Uh, verses 18 on to verse 22. But as God is true, our word toward you was not yea and nay. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, even by me and Silvanius and Timotheus, was not yea and nay, but in him was yea. For all the promises of God in him are yea and in him, amen. Yea, yes, amen. Truth, okay? Unto the glory of God by us. Now he which establisheth us with you in Christ and hath anointed us. And we're going to get to this. Anointed us is God. So some kind of special esoteric um, thing that doesn't happen to everybody by, you know, the Lord appearing to you. But happens only, no, no. This anointing, we'll get to that really quickly here, okay? Now, he which establisheth us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God, who hath also sealed us. The Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit, sealed until the day of redemption. Once saved, always saved. You come to him on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord, you call upon his name. Okay? Well, I've done that. But yet you saw God and God who is audibly talking to you gives you stuff that contra... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Time out. Okay? Who hath also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. <clears throat> Moreover, I call God for a record upon my soul... That to spare you, I came not as yet unto Corinth. Not that we have dominion over your faith, but are helpers of your joy. For by faith ye stand. Blessed are they who have not seen and believe. So you're standing by faith by what you saw and what you heard, like an audible voice. Verse, what, 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 what was this? Verse 21. And hath anointed us. You hear a lot of, the anointing is on me right now. The anointing is upon me. David Wilkerson. Joyce Meyer. Uh, uh, what's that, uh, um, that, that weird uh, muscle guy? Uh, Todd White. The anointing is upon me. Yeah, yeah, they, you know, yeah, yeah. What is this anointing? Go to 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. Verses 18 on to verse 27. What is this anointing? Gives me no pleasure to do this. But you people need to be warned. 
We need to be warned. We need to be aware of these things because these charismatic can creep in very... Shame on me. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard, that Antichrist shall come. And now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. <laughs> Look at them out there, brethren. Look at them online here. Okay? You're looking for, unless you know, unless you have a specific thing that you are looking for and you know what to look for, you're looking for something Christian, you're going to come across Catholics, Charismatics, or Calvinists. Okay? Catholics, Charismatics, uh, the Doplins, Calvinists, Justin Peters, John MacArthur, Washer, Voody Bocham, Wretched Radio. Nah, nah, nah. Okay? Okay? They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. The, the level of the falling away, I, I've been telling you, that the falling away is just going to keep, and this is what the falling away is. Right there, verse 19, that is what the falling away talked about in 2 Thessalonians. That is the falling away. It's happening at an alarming rate and happening with those whom you never would expect it to happen with. Okay? Never expect it. It's like you get the rug pulled out. It's like, whoa. Wait, what? What's, what? What? What are you talking? What? What? Oh. A Jesuit coadjutor got to you, huh? Oh, oh, wow. Looking back in retrospect. Oh, boy. The level of the falling away that is happening right now is at an alarming rate. An alarming rate. But ye have an unction... From the Holy One. And ye know all things. An unction from the Holy One. Seal until the day of redemption. The Holy Ghost. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth. And the truth is Jesus Christ. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Right? Okay? I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth but because ye know it, and that no lies of the truth. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist, that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Let that therefore abide in you which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye shall also ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. What remains in you? The Lord. Okay? Unless you have believed in vain. See, if you believed in vain, then that which is in you can come and go because it's not founded, founded upon truth because you didn't come to the Lord truly. Because once saved, always saved. You're sealed until the day of redemption. So what is this talking about? They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Okay, you say you're saved. You say you're a Christian. And yet all this nonsense is going about you, and you're saved. Is that, is, is that abiding in you that is real or is it that you're not saved at all? Let that therefore abide in you which ye have heard from the beginning. What did you hear from the beginning? 
God appearing to you? Oh boy. Oh boy. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he hath promised us, even eternal life. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. I have seen. I have seen. God spoke to me in a dream. God, I heard the, I heard the Lord say to me, we're little energizer bunnies glowing. What? God, God appeared to me. I can't, I can't remember what it, but I've seen it. I've seen it. But the anointing which ye have received of him. What is that anointing? The Holy Ghost. And see, the charismatic is like, the anointing is upon me. But see, the anointing, yes, the anointing is the Holy Ghost. But see, when they say that, what they're doing is they're applying Old Testament doctrine for today. That the Holy Ghost would come upon them suddenly and they would give a prophecy. Just like it happened with uh, uh, um, Samson and some of the other, like the Holy Ghost came upon them and all of a sudden they said something in the name of the Lord. Old Testament, the Holy Ghost would come and go, come and go. Unlike today, once saved, always saved. You come to the Lord on His terms. He seals you. God lives within you 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. So see, they say right. Yes, the anointing is upon me. Yes, the Holy Ghost. Yes. But see, what they're doing is they're taking something from another dispensation and trying to rationalize it and make it applicable today. And it is not. The Holy Ghost doesn't come and go, come and go today. If you are saved, you are saved. The Holy Ghost is in you. Now, you can quench the Spirit. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. But He ain't going anywhere. The anointing, yes, is the Holy Ghost. Our Lord Jesus Christ. But see, but see when the charismatic says it, they are saying it in the pretense of, He's come upon me as if he's, they're an Old Testament prophet. You're, you're claiming that you are getting Old Testament revelation in this dispensation. You are deceived or you're a deceiver. There is no option C. There is no option C. Okay? But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. Abiding in him. See, like I said, if ye love me, keep my commandments. Okay? Not at force. God doesn't want a robot. You're not a robot being forced to do something. Okay? He, he lives with us. Okay? That, that one him. He walks with me and talks with me a long life something way he lives he lives salvation to impart okay no he's in us we walk with him okay we have to abide in him we're saved once saved always saved yes we are if the lord has actually saved you you're sealed you're going to heaven no matter what okay but the abiding, he's, he's right here in us. He ain't going nowhere. But are we in love, in fear, abiding in him? See? See? Are you abiding in him? That anointing is the Holy Ghost, yes, which is permanent. Doesn't come and go, come and go, like these charismatics want you to believe, okay? Now, Verse 18 in John chapter 14. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. I will come to you. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Hmm. 
2 Corinthians chapter 3. Second Corinthians chapter three, verses 12 on to verse 18. Seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech and not as Moses, which put a veil over his face that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. You like to leave out the abolished thing. So see, it's talking about the light that... Let's, let's keep reading, okay? But their minds were blinded, for until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Then you'll be able to shine like a light bulb. Give me a break, man. Now, the Lord is that spirit. I will come to you. The Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is charity. Oh, excuse me. It's liberty. You pompous, snot-nosed, arrogant, lying, little yea hath God said devil. <laughs> Go, go lick the bottom of his dog dung covered boot, boy. Lying little devil you are. Yea, hath God said. <laughs> but we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image. From glory to glory. The glory of man. To glory, the glory of God, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So, so see, see, people shine as lights today, actually and physically, because he talks about Moses. Hmm. Dear, 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 dear man, dear friends. Go to Exodus. What, uh, let's look at this, okay? Exodus. You're not rightly dividing the word of truth. Paul was using that as an example. He's not saying that that's actually happening today, that we are walking around as little lights shining, okay? That you, you're greatly deceived. You're greatly deceived. And I know that you people are not going to listen to the truth. I understand that. But if you ever get the stones one day, and willing to hear the truth, may the Lord convict you of this. Exodus 34, verses 29 on to verse 35. And it came to pass, when Moses came down from Mount Sinai, with the two tables of the testimony in Moses' hand, when he came down from the mount, that Moses wist not that the skin of his face shone, when, while he talked with him. Shone. Shine. Yes. Because he was in the presence of the Lord. Okay? He was in the presence of the Lord. Before Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? Okay? And which is similar to the transfiguration, which we're going to look at. Okay? But let's continue. And when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold... The skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come nigh him. So see right there, because the Lord's in you, you shine. That's why... Be no. The Jews require a sign. Okay? The book of Exodus? Exodus is a book of transition. They were given the law coming from the time of the patriarchs unto the dispensation of the law. Exodus is a book of transition. The Jews require... Dude. 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 And Moses called unto them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned unto him, and Moses talked with them. 
And afterward all the children of Israel came nigh, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. See, at this time, the Holy Ghost, come go, come go. He was with Moses, and Moses, you know, it was a unique thing. Today, it's not because, why? The, the Lord lives within us. You can be right out there on your patio, get on your knees, and go before the presence of the Lord today. Unlike how you uh, how it was in the Old Testament. See, what you're doing is you're taking something from another dispensation, twisting it. When Paul gives it for an example in this dispensation, yes, but you're twisting it, trying to make it relative for today, and it is not. That is dangerous, and God did not show you that. Absolutely, he did not. Okay, wake up! Okay? Until Moses had done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But when Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he took the veil off until he came out. And he came out and spake unto the children of Israel that which he was commanded. And the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of, of Moses' face shone. And Moses put the veil upon his face again until he went in to speak with him. Now, Someone shining like this, uh, as I'm aware, this is the only time this happens. And it was a extraordinary thing and an extraordinary time in a book of transition. Because the Jews require a sign. You look at Exodus, all those were signs for the Jews. The Jews require a sign. Man, okay? But, but, okay. Exodus chapter 33 Right across the page, verses 11 on to verse 23, okay? Exodus chapter 33, what did I write down here? Verses 11 on to verse 23. Oh, <laughs> 33, Brad. <laughs> okay. Oh, one second, brethren. I'm, uh, one second. Okay, Exodus 33, verses 12, on to verse 23. Okay? Not 11. And Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not been, let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, Shew me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. <laughs> like you're, like my brother, our best friend says, I'm a grade A born, bred Missouri mule. Show me something. Moses, show me something. Because the Jews require a sign. Okay? And he said, my presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, tarry, uh, carry us not up and hence. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken. For thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. And he said, I beseech thee, shew me thy glory. Give me a sign. The Jews require a sign. The sign gifts are out of operation today. Okay? They died with the apostles. Okay? There are no more sign gifts. The Moses' face shining was a sign unto his fellow people, the Hebrews, the Jews. It was a sign. The Jews require a sign. And there will be no sign given to them today except the sign of the prophet Jonas, talking about the death, burial, and resurrection, a type thereof. Okay? It's a sign for Jews. That's what this is talking about. Not that this happens today. That you are walking around with the Holy Ghost in you shining like a light bulb. That's insanity. God didn't give you that, dear friend. He didn't give you that. 
We did not. The devil gave you that. Okay? And he said, verse 19, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will shew mercy on whom I will shew mercy. Good definition of grace. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. We covered this yesterday, okay? Or yesterday, uh, Monday. But that will be in the description box, okay? And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. And it shall come to pass, while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in a cliff of the rock, and will cover thee with my hand, while I pass by. And I will take, my hand, take away mine hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. And we talk about this in depth uh, in the previous video, okay? It was a sign. It was a sign unto the Jews. His face shone because he saw the presence of the Lord, okay? Before the incarnation, before Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. We cover this in the previous video. This is, was a sign gift, okay? This was a sign, okay? A sign. We just read it in Exodus chapter 34, okay? This is not applicable for today, okay? All right? And even while the sign gifts in this dispensation were uh, going, they weren't walking around glowing, got the glow. No, 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 okay? Now, there's something similar that happens. Matthew chapter 17, okay? Matthew chapter 17. Matthew 5, 6, 7. Matthew chapter 17, verses 1 on to verse 13. The transfiguration. Okay? But there's something different here. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? Matthew chapter 17, verses 1 on to verse 13. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart. And was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun. Okay? And his raiment was white as the light. His face did shine as the sun. Bright as the sun. Okay? I think that, you know, when the, when the uh, he talked with Moses face to face. And he said, yet no man can see my face. He appeared in the form of a man so Moses could see him. Okay? Okay? Obviously, God has a body. Okay? And when God made appearances unto men, he appeared in the form of a body, in the form of a man, so man could behold him in the whirlwind and in the flaming bush, and also with the three children in the uh, fire of, of Nebuchadnezzar. Okay? I see a fourth, and his form is as the Son of God. Okay? Son of God meaning a man, okay? And behold, there appeared with them Moses and Elias talking with him, the two witnesses. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. How do you hear Jesus today? Audibly? Through the scriptures. Through the scriptures. Okay. Is it possible that God could audibly speak to you? Well, how are you going to know which one, if it's not a devil or God? Hmm? God is a spirit. How are you going to discern? How are you going to discern what voice is talking to you if the voice that is talking to you gives you something that is contrary to Scripture? See, that's why you're so, supposed to search the day, Scriptures daily, whether these things be so, not just listen to them, okay? And, why, and when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise, and be not afraid. And when they lift up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. And yes, verse 8 is where they derive the Jesus only thing. 
Yes. But there again, in Scripture, find me anywhere in Scripture where anyone is baptized with verbally saying, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. No, a singular name, Jesus Christ. So be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, which I believe scripturally is the right way to be baptized. If you were baptized in the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, like that, I believe actually, I'm not saying go get rebaptized because being baptized in water is not necessary for your salvation. It's an outward profession of an inner conversion. That's what it is, okay? You're not going to go to hell if you're not baptized in water, Catholic. Catholic, can also concerning the Pentecostals and you Lutherans as well, okay? Lutherans, yeah. Wanted his German Catholic Church, kind of like some other people I know, or I'm aware of, excuse me. Don't want to know. But anyway, okay? But yes, Verse 8 is where they derived the Jesus only thing. Yes. And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elias must first come? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly first shall, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elias has come already, and they knew him not but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. And the, the Lord had me to do a video uh, about this, about um, Elias has come already in John the Baptist and stuff like that. Uh, if I can remember, I'll link it in the description box, okay? And, and, and go now to Matthew chapter 4, okay? Matthew chapter 4, verses 12 on to verse 16. Matthew chapter 4, verses 12 on to verse 16. Now when Jesus had heard that John was cast into, the, into prison, he departed into Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the seacoast, in the borders of Zabalon and Naphtali that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people which sat in darkness saw great light, and, in, and to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. Talking about our Lord Jesus Christ, which is that light. Yes, yes. And people saw the Holy Ghost descending upon him as a dove. Yes. And these guys will say, well, they saw the face of Stephen shining as an angel. Okay, as if it... No, that's not talking about a literal shining light. Okay? No, that isn't. No. You know, have your face shines just because you're happy and filled with joy. It doesn't mean that your face is actually shining as it were Moses. God didn't give you that. God, God did not give you that. That no, no. God did not show you that. The God of this world did. Okay, who is deceiving you? Uh, Matthew chapter five, verses fourteen on to verse sixteen. Okay, ye are the light of the world. A, can, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Now, now, okay, these charismatics will take this verse and say, see, you, you, you shine literally, physically shine like a light bulb. No, number one, this is for the kingdom of heaven. Number two, it describes what it's talking about within the verse. Your light will shine through when you do what God has said. Not that you're physically shining. <laughs> okay? But that they... Okay, okay. Uh, let, let's finish, okay? Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Now, this is the Sermon on the Mount, which is doctrinally for the kingdom of heaven the thousand-year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ, when he is physically, literally sitting on the throne in Jerusalem. Okay? 
Yes, this is for a different dispensation. Okay, but even if you want to twist this, it, it's like, okay, people will see the Lord in you by what you are doing, how you are living your life according to the scriptures. Okay, absolutely. But now go to Ephesians chapter 2. Okay, Ephesians chapter 2. Okay, Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Verses 4 under verse 10. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 under verse 10. Okay? But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together, quickened, made alive with Christ. By grace, unmerited favor. We already looked at what the de scriptural definition of grace is in the book of Exodus. Okay? For by grace, by grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might shew the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, the works of the law, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, a new creature, unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. As ministers of reconciliation, having the word of reconciliation, as being ambassadors for Christ. Okay? See, God doesn't save you to just have you sit there on your duff and do nothing. Okay? You have been called on to good works. Yes, you have. Yes, you have. Okay? So, see, you see that teaching crossing dispensational lines. Okay? You know, you're, you're, you're saved because you say you are, but yet you live like the world. But yet... People are going to know, the lost are going to know you are saved because of a visible light. <laughs> and, and, and we already read 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Okay? Verses 17 on to verse 21. Okay? We've already covered it. All right? And, and, and what is that? Verse 18? I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Okay? And, and more on that... Uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, okay? And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in John chapter 14, verses 15 on to verse 26, dear friend, is talking about the Holy Ghost. Okay? Now, go to Colossians chapter 1, verses 26 on to verse 29. Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. God physically appears to... <laughs> to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you, which is Christ... In which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. And you're not going to be shining like a light bulb that only lost people. Dude. Oh, dude. Whom we preach. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Okay. And how shall they believe unless they hear the word of God from who? A, a preacher? Okay. Yeah. Whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom. Not that they're seeing signs. That we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. Okay? And 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Okay? 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 13 on to verse 17. 
But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Chosen. That's not Calvinism, elect and non-elect. Chosen you, meaning you went to the cross on his terms. He chose to wear the cross. He is a God who chooses, and he chose to wear the cross. Hence, you go to him on his terms to wear the cross, you are chosen. See, that's how that works. Not that you're an esoteric where God appears to you visibly, physically, or you hear him audibly, or that you're like, nonsense! <sighs> Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself, and God even our Father, which hath loved us, and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts, and establish you in every good word and work. Okay? Okay? Now, First, uh, first John, John chapter 14, verse 19. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more, but ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also, but ye see me. So see, that means actually physically. No, no. What, number one, what he is talking about is, you know, he walked them up, okay? Verse 19, uh, he was up. Among his, you know, after the death, burial, and resurrection, he was among the disciples for what, 40 days or something like that? Okay? All right? He was among his people, okay? But Romans chapter 5, verses 8 and 10. Romans chapter 5, Romans chapter 5, verses 8 and 10. See, this absurd, nonsensical, heretical belief that God appeared to you and going through all this to try to justify it, nonsense, man. The devil has deceived you, okay? Uh, Romans chapter 5, verses 8 and 10. But God commandeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if we were enemies... For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God, for if when we were enemies, we, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being rec reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. That life that is in us. He is, I am the way, the truth, and the life. When he saves you, you are a new creature. You are risen from the dead, being dead in trespasses and sins. He is the way, the truth, and the life. You have life in you because you have the Lord in you. Okay? That's what that's talking about. Okay? You get it? Let's continue. Okay? Oh, me, that's me being prideful, huh? I'm warning you. You people are deceived. Greatly deceived by Satan. Thinking that you have seen him. That you hear him. And getting these nonsensical, non-dispensational nonsense. And thinking it's from the Lord. I'm warning you. Repent. Because you have not seen the Lord. And the Lord is not giving you this stuff. Please repent. Okay. Please repent. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Isolate yourself amongst people and, and, and keep this quiet. Who's going to warn you? Then again, <laughs> it's better. There's more hope of a fool than someone who is wise in their own conceits. Dear, dear. <sighs> 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 45 on to verse 50. And so it is written, The first Adam was made a living soul, and the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Quickening, meaning make alive, giving life. Because until the Lord saves you, you're dead. And when he saves you, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
Sanctify them through thy truth. That word is truth. And new life. You're a new creature. That's what that means. Okay? Okay. Howbeit that which that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. For the first man is of the earth earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. And is the as is the earthy, such are they that are earthy. And this wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish, led by your senses, emotional, okay, sensational, okay. And as we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Okay? First, which is natural, then spiritual. Okay? You're born in sin. You're a natural man, unregenerate. You die to sin. When you die to sin, you die to yourself when the Lord saves you. You're broken of your self-righteousness. Okay? You're contrite because it's your fault. And you the, got the hell scared out of you. You cry on the name of the Lord. And he saved you. You have a new life. You are a new creature. And you are sealed with the Holy Ghost, which this is talking about. Okay? Okay? And John chapter 3. Oh, ho, ho. Probably, well, what about John chapter 3? What about John chapter 3? Yeah. Yeah. Before the death, burial, and resurrection, still under the dispensation of the law. Okay? John chapter 3. Verses 18 under verse 21. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed the name in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. So see, that means, no, no. Yes, Jesus Christ is that light. And yes, that light is in us, but it is not exuding a visual fit. Go up to a lost person, see for yourself. Uh, is a light coming from me that you see in me like uh, like the thumbnail? You're going to be looked at. You're already being looked at as if you're crazy. That, that'll that really scare them off. It's like, oh, this guy thinks he's glowing like uh, Barry Gordy's The Last Dragon. Eh? You better get away from this guy. Yeah, you're going to scare him off with that nonsense. No, man, it's not how... No. Oh. No. No, okay? No. <laughs> no, no. No. And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. So see, that's why they, they, they get scared of you, because they could no, man. No. The only way you can justify that is going out of dispensation that we are in today and taking other things and twisting them. It's not like that today, man. You've been lied to. You're deceived. The Lord didn't give you that. You're deceived. All of you. All you charismatics. You're deceived. Okay? For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. Okay? He's talking about himself. Okay? And yes, he lives within us, but we are not radiating and we are not radiating actual light as a light bulb. Okay, okay, yeah, light might radiate off my bald head. Sure, but no, they're, they're not like the thumbnail. No, no! Oh! Oh, that, that's just... John chapter 15. Okay, John chapter 15. John chapter 15, verses 21 on to verse 27. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. 
If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. See, it's the word that convicts. Not some weird light show thing. Oh, kind of like an angel of light. Now, you know what? That could probably happen today. But that is not something that happens from the Lord. But rather from that angel of light. Satan, who transforms himself as the angel of light. As an angel of light, excuse me. Okay? If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. Why? Because of the word that he spoke. They have no cloak for their sin. Why? Because of the word that, they, that we speak. The scriptures. Okay? He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now they have both seen and hated both me and my father. Well, Brad, what about that? The Jews require a sign. How many times can how many times do we gotta say it? And you're still not gonna get it. Because you don't want to. Because you're special. But this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. But when the Comforter has come, whom I will send to you, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me, and ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. And he's talking about the disciples, but the Holy Ghost coming and we are to work out what he has put in. And, and John chapter 16, verses 5 on to verse 14. Okay. But now I go my way. But now I go my way to him that sent me. And none of you asketh me, whither goest thou? But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin. Okay? And of righteousness, and of judgment, of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and ye see me no more. And ye see me no more. Signs and wonders were for the Jews. We walk by faith, not by sight. It's not things that we see or sensationalism, man. Okay? Or of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Okay, uh, what are we reading to? Okay, verse 14. Okay? Howbeit, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that he shall speak, and he will shew you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall shew it unto you. He's talking about, okay, in John chapter 14 here, verses 15 on to verse 26, uh, he, he's talking about the Holy Ghost. He's talking about the coming Holy Ghost. Not that today. And this is before the death burial. He was going to be crucified. The dispensation was ending. Okay? Signs unto the Jews. Okay? And yes, he did manifest to people in this dispensation. But it was for a sign unto the Jews. And the sign gifts are gone, man. Verse 20. At that day, ye shall know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. And I in you. Meaning the Holy Ghost. 
John chapter 10. John chapter 10. John chapter 10, verses 27 on to verse 31. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Now, when he says that the sheep will hear my voice and they follow me, uh, this is uh, John chapter 10, before the death, burial, and resurrection. He was going around saying, I am the Christ, here I am, I'm your Messiah, your Mashiach, come, here I am, come to me, follow me, here I am, okay? And uh, verses 1 on to verse 5 in John chapter 10, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. Yeah, those who boot the door out of the way, but refuse to go in through the door. They boot the door out of the way and climb up some other way. Oh, I just believed. Oh, I just called. Oh, I gave up this. Oh, I'm elect. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he and this right here, he's talking about, he's giving reference unto the redemption of the purchased possession. He's making reference unto it. Okay? To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. <laughs> And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Talk about a familiar spirit, huh? Wizards and stuff like that. But yet, a lot of these charismatics are following the voice of a stranger, who is a familiar spirit, such as the devil. And that's something. Because remember, Satan is a fan of man. And of course, what, 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 what do they do? What's one of they go to? They, the still small voice. Right? Right. Right. First Kings chapter 19. First Kings chapter 19. Okay. 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 11 on to verse 13. 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 11 on to verse 13. God speaking to his prophet Elijah. The Jews require a sign. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. Hmm. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after that, after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the holy fire. In the fire, excuse me. And after the fire, a still small voice. You know... You can hear the Lord talk to you, but not audibly. See, those of you who are truly saved, genuinely saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, you know what you know what I'm talking about. But see, those who are dependent on visual stimuli, on sensationalisms, actually have to hear an audible voice or actually see. You're not walking by faith. You're walking by sight. You're walking by your senses. Are you saved? Can, I, can the Lord speak to you audibly today? I don't know. If it is possible, is it possible? I suppose so, maybe. But how are you going to discern which is which? 
unless you're searching the scriptures daily. And look, I don't care if you don't want to believe in rightly dividing the word of truth. Uh, you are to rightly divide the word of truth. The whole book is written for us, but the whole book is not written to us, okay? If you're hearing a voice... And you're taking things from different dispensations. And you're not hearing from the Lord. You're not hearing from the Lord. Okay? You're not hearing from the Lord. See, to hear an audible voice. And to depend on an audible voice that you are hearing. Then. Are you walking by faith? And if you see something, what is faith? Well, things that you hope for that you are not seen. There's a reason why God is not speaking audibly to people in, in their ears. See, devils can whisper in, their, in your ear. You're listening, you're hearing devils. God, God will speak to you. He'll speak to your heart. That's still small voice. God will speak to you. Through the scriptures. Yes. But audibly? No. I don't think so. Well, Brad, you're limiting the whole... The God you're hearing from is telling you to take things out of different dispensations and twisting the thing and making you believe that you... Go on. Go on. Go on. Brad, you said the Lord's part. Do the scriptures! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do the scriptures. Now go back to John chapter 14. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, because I live. Ye shall live also, but ye see me when he appeared unto them. And because I live, ye shall live also. Uh, he lives in you, and he is the way, the truth, and the life. And now the big one. Verse 21. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him. And will manifest myself to him. And there are charismatics that will take that verse and manifest myself to him to justify that God has manifested physically to them and seen him. You're lying. You're deceived. Or you're a deceiver. Manif I will. He's talking about the Holy Ghost. I, the Lord is that spirit. I will manifest myself to him. Meaning the Holy Ghost. He is talking about the coming dispensation. He's about to go to the cross to be crucified. He's talking about the coming dispensation of the Holy Ghost. He is not talking about today him appearing to you, revealing himself physically to you for you to see. He is not talking about that. You are deceived. Or you're a deceiver. You are twisting this verse to justify yourself. That is not the truth. The, he is not talking about a physical manifestation. It's if if you were following along, you would see that it's talking. He's talking about the Holy Ghost, not a physical manifestation. You're crazy. You're crazy. Repent. Repent, please, of this nonsense. Repent. Get, get right with the Lord. Get saved if you are not saved. Because, dude, you're trying to say that in verse 21, you're justifying him appearing to you. Manifest myself.
Seest thou a man lies in his own conceit? There is more hope of a fool than of him. And this is this is this is how it is with these charismatics. I I've I've come across this with these charismatic women who break down tear and cry. It's like, look, I'm sorry, you haven't seen the Lord. You are not hearing from him. You're seeing that angel of light, Satan. If you've seen, I'm not doubting that they've seen something, but you've seen Satan or one of his ministers or one of his angels. You're hearing the devil. Repent. Excuse me. Repent. Repent of this foolishness. Please. Please repent. It's not this way today. You've been lied to and you are deceived. Now, as I said in the previous video, we're going to go over verses that we went over in the previous video. But again, it's pertinent for this. The manifest, the manifestation is what? The Holy Ghost. Not that he's going to physically appear before you so you can see him. That's nonsense, that's lunacy, that's insanity, and that's deception, that's crazy. It's not how it is. Okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Okay? We went over these yesterday. Not yesterday, excuse me. On Monday, okay? Feels like yesterday. But we're going over them again. Okay? We have to. We have to. 2 Corinthians 5, verses 5 and 8. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Your faith, so called, is based upon what you've seen. Okay? We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Amen. Okay? We walk by faith, not by sight. Okay? Hebrews chapter 11. Okay? Hebrews, which is for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Okay? It's a time of Jacob's trouble epistle. Okay? Hebrews chapter 6. Verse 1. Uh, no, excuse me. Verse 11. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Verses 24 on to verse 25. 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay? <laughs> for we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for what for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Well, what are you hoping for when you've already seen the Lord? John, John chapter 11, John chapter 11, John chapter 11, John chapter 11. <clears throat> John chapter 11, verse 25, and uh, verse 25. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live, because he is the way, the truth, and the life. And that life that is in us is the Lord ourselves, not that he is appearing to us physically. Okay? I am the resurrection. Okay? If you've seen Christ already, then you've seen the resurrection. But... 
Uh, Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2, verses 11 on to verse 15. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Salvation is there for everyone to have. You have to go to him on his terms, not boot the door out of the way and go up some other way. Okay? But it's there. It's there. Okay? Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, if the Lord has already appeared to you, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee, which is what I'm doing. I'm rebuking with all authority. Wish I didn't have to do this. And I really wish it wasn't public. I really wish it wasn't. But many people are deceived by this charismatic heresy. Not just a few. Many think they have seen. Like the Fatima Mary. Many have think they have seen it. You haven't seen God. You haven't seen God. John chapter 20. Uh, actually, before we go to John chapter 20, let's go to... 1 Peter chapter 1, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 on to verse 8. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if needs be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold, that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found under praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. That is coming and stuff like that. And also talking about when, uh, excuse me, at the appearing of Jesus Christ, okay? Okay, second coming. When he appears the second time. But remember, when he calls us up, we're going to see him. Remember with Saul that the other people didn't, you know, heard something, but they didn't see what Paul saw, Right? Or I might have that backwards. The point is, our Lord can reveal himself unto those who are his and call him up while everyone around thinks it thunders. Okay? Let's continue. Whom having not seen, ye love. And whom though now ye see him not, yet believing, Ye rejoice with joy unspeakable. Verse 9. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. The salvation of your soul. Come up hither. The salvation of our souls. We are saved. Yes. But it is finally, you know, because, you know, we are seated together with him in heavenly places. But see, we're still down here. But when he says, come up hither. Okay. Whom having not seen. See, here's the problem. Here's the problem. If John 14 which is still doctrinally under the law, and he's describing about the coming of the Holy Ghost, 
talking about how he's coming on to them. If John chapter 14, verse 21 means that God will physically appear to himself and Peter just said that you don't see him, no, well, that would be a contradiction. You haven't seen God. I'm not doubting that these people have seen something. I'm not doubting that at all. You've seen Satan. Or one of his ministers. You haven't seen God. You haven't seen God. Okay? John chapter 20, verses 26 on to verse 29. And after eight days again, his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered, and said unto him, My Lord my, and my God. Thomas, a Jew, he needed a sign. The Lord gave him one. Just like Paul was given a sign, Peter was given a sign through a Gentile. Oh, and let's not forget John, who was revealed the final book of the scriptures. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed. First, uh, John, first, John chapter 14, picking up at verse 22. Now we went through all that. Now we're not going to expound anymore because we don't need to. Because the scripture will explain itself. He's talking about he is the Holy Ghost and he will manifest himself to him. Wow, he will dwell within him. He dwells within us. That's what he's talking about. He's not talking about a physical manifestation that you get to see Jesus right there in front of you. Verse 22, Judah saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which he hear is not mine, but the father which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you, physically. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. So see, from verses 22 on to verse 26, he tells us that he's talking about the Holy Ghost. This is the Last Supper. He was telling the disciples, the apostles, excuse me, our Lord Jesus was telling them what was going to take place in the coming dispensation that we have today. Okay? Yes, in this dispensation, the Lord appeared unto Saul, who would become Paul. He appeared unto Cornelius to be a sign for Peter eventually. And yes, he appeared unto John. He appeared unto all the apostles. But yes, he appeared unto John to reveal to him the book of Revelation. You, you come into John 14, verse 21, to justify your esoteric thing that God appeared to you. This is the truth. You're deceived. And you're not hearing from God, you're hearing from devils. The Lord did not appear to you. you, you saw Satan or one of his angels. Sorry. Some of, some of you are kind, sweet, and sincere. 
You haven't been to heaven, and you haven't been to hell. You're deceived. I'm sorry. I am so. I, I, I am. I am truly sorry. I am truly sorry. I mean, you can go ahead and keep watching those nonsensical, I've been to heaven and hell, and oh, he's preaching the right thing. So see, oh, like, you're deceived. You're deceived. And what appeared to you, and what may be speaking to you, is not guiding you onto heaven. I, I was a charismatic. Okay, I was. I was a charismatic. It's not how it is today, man. Dear friends, it's not how it is today. Okay? <laughs> I mean... If you're going to believe a devil, the devil who appeared to you and believe what the devil's saying to you, of course you're going to believe one of his uh, messengers who lies and is sent by the Jesuits to cause division and separate cheap friends. Of course you're going to believe that liar. Because you're both of the same spirit. What is that? Uh, what is that? Uh, dead dog is better than a roaring lion, or something like that. If you're alive today, you have hope. Repent. Repent of this. Get away from that heresy. Because it's not leading you on to our Lord. And I pray, I do pray that Proverbs 26.12 doesn't apply. Seest thou a man wise in his own conceit? There is more hope of a fool than of him. See, and this is the heartbreak. This is the heartbreak with the charismatics. Some of them are just act actually decent, kind, loving, friendly people. But when you start going around and basing everything that you've seen the Lord and he speaks to you audibly and all this stuff and just... Bow your head. Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. I repent of being willfully blind. And I repent, Lord, of not speaking up sooner. And Lord, may you please... Rescue these people from this snare, this grip of Satan who've believed in this nonsense that is contrary to your word and contradicts your word and is actually damning people to hell. Lord, if just one charismatic repents and gets away from this and the devil's ministers praise you, Lord, just one, just one, just one. That's all it's about. So long as just one person hears, then praise the Lord. Praise you, Lord. But I know, Lord, that people are lovers of their own selves and are giving heed to doctrines of devils and seducing spirits. And I know that men are wise in their own conceits. And you just said, 
that it's more hope of a fool than of them. I pray it is not so for some of these people, brother, Lord, for these people. Beloved Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. I pray that just one charismatic realizes the foolishness of his or her folly and repents and gets right with you and gets saved or get away from that and get right on track with you again. Please, Lord. Please, Lord. Please, Lord. We ask this in Jesus' name. Our Heavenly Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, and in Jesus' name, God's people said, Amen. That's going to be it for this video. Um, by the way, thank you um, for all of you who still pray for us and still help us. Thank you. And my wife is doing better. Um, I neglected to mention that in the previous video, and thank you for the rebuke, by the way. Um, the whole hip replacement surgery thingy, the ball that held my wife's hip in place was worn with time. So what happened was they cut her open, and they put a bigger one in, and uh, they put a piece of tape on her instead of stitches and whatnot. And the process was long, but it went very smoothly. And I didn't know anything about the process. I was assuming that she would be wheelchair ridden, ridden for a week. She was not. Uh, she was. It's custom here in America. If someone leaves the hospital, they take you out in a, in a wheelchair. But she was walking with a walker. And our, 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 one of our beloved brothers, our, one of our friends, sent us these canes. Uh, these canes that a relative of his made, absolutely beautiful, which she's using. Um, so yeah, it's been a week today since my wife's hip was fixed. Um, she's doing pretty good. Like I said, um, you know, I thought that she was going to be in a wheelchair for at least a week. That No, she wasn't. She was walking the next day. What happened recently was that my wife overdid it and was walking as if she had no surgery. And she's been kind of paying for that. So, <laughs> but um, yes, thank you for all of you who have prayed for my wife. Please continue to pray for us. Um, you know, ever since the Lord had me to do videos going after charismatics, the attacks, the spiritual attacks, and things that have been revealed have been astounding. So please keep us in your prayers. Thank you to those of you who help us. We, we need all the help we can get. We need your prayers. Please pray for us. Please pray for us. This counsel or work be of men, it will come to naught. There's a lot of you out there who don't want to see me anymore. But that's not up to you. And you can try all you want. You ain't going to stop me. A, you're not going to stop me. The only one who could do that is the Lord. It's in his hands. And you could do nothing against me unless it was given to you from above. So, as long as the Lord says yea, I'm going to press forward. Understand? <laughs> so, thank you so much for watching this if you do. We love you. We're praying for many of you. We'll see you in the next video.